existential crisis. I don't understand what space time is or my place in the universe anymore. Ah! Oh, physics penguin, that sounds terrifying. Sometimes it can be really terrifying to be alive and to be like, what is all of this? And that's why science is really cool because we can poke at things around us. We'll put physics penguin in the pocket for now. And just kidding, they don't have pockets. Um, we can poke at things in the universe and ask really big thorny questions and try to peel back layers to better understand this wild and wonderful world around us. So what is space time? That sounds like something kind of wild and right out of science fiction, but in fact, it is the fabric of reality. It is the plane of existence that you, I, and everything we can see, feel, hear, and touch exists in. So space-time, even though it might sound kind of big and scary, is really just acknowledging that like we move through space, right? I can move forward and backward. That's one dimension, forwards and backwards. I can move left and I can move right. That's a second dimension, this way. And I can move up and down. Up and down. Oh, my hair really went up. Whoa! <laughs> up and down. So that's three space dimensions. So 3D in space. Yay! And also, everything that is alive or anything that has motion also moves in time. But time, as far as we know, only has one dimension. So 1D in time. And when you combine these, do, 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 the three dimensions of space and the one dimension of time, boom, that's space time. When I read it on the board, it becomes real. Okay, that's it. Space time is really just acknowledging that to describe fundamental phenomena in the universe, like our lives or the trajectory of a ball, um, or an apple falling from a tree, we need not just spatial dimensions, but time dimensions. And like all good scientists, drawing graphs can help us understand how things move in space and time. Now, drawing four dimensions in a three-dimensional spatial world is really tricky, so the way that uh, we can get around that is by putting, by simplifying things and putting one dimension of space on our graph, um, and we're, get, we're gonna do it in meters because that's preferred, um, and then time can go on the y-axis. Um, but we wanna be able to make reasonable comparisons or equivalent comparisons, and so generally speaking, what happens is uh, we multiply the speed of light by time, because time is given in seconds, not meters, right? Um, and so by multiplying the speed of light, where C equals 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So this has units of meters per second. And if we multiply by time, which has units of seconds, then we get meters. Um, so this is kind of just a conversion factor. Um, and this helps us to understand how things move in the universe because I can say, well, if I add some plots or some uh, lines to my plot and I'm like, this is one meter, this is two, three, four, et cetera. Um, and I have something that is, let's say I'm taking a break and I'm sitting on the couch watching a really good show or playing Legend of Zelda, then I am not moving in space. Ooh, let's use a different color. I'm gonna rotate all the way around. We're gonna use red for my red hair. <laughs> So if I'm just like chilling, sitting, I'm moving in time, right? But I'm not moving in space. And if somehow we were to freeze everything in the universe, or if we were to move something uh, to absolute zero Kelvin, then that would look like this, where it could, and then move that object around. That object would not be moving in time, but it would be moving in space. Now, I don't know if we can actually do that because at absolute Kelvin or absolute zero Kelvin, um, like kind of everything ceases to exist for that particle. That particle is kind of frozen in time, but that's kind of interesting, right? So the whole concept of cryogenesis in uh, sci-fi 
and especially for interstellar travel, basically like how do you get somebody very, very far away without them aging through it? If it takes 200 years from your perspective, you're like, well, wait, that's kind of a problem. Um, so theoretically, if you could like freeze somebody in time, you could move them through space and then they wake up and they're the same age and they're like, whoa, wild. So that's what that trajectory would look like. Uh, but as far as I know, we don't know how to do that yet. Uh, but pretty cool to think about. And so you can kind of imagine that like most of our lives are spent kind of in like this kind of a trajectory um, or well, actually more like a step function, you know, like we're not always moving that kind of stuff. But the key thing here is that we are always moving in time. And that's one of the things, one of the reasons why time is really tricky is because we're really stuck in it. It's a little bit easier, in my opinion, to have thought experiments about space than it is about time because we can sit still in space, but we can't really sit still in time. So something to noodle on. Super cool. All right. I hope that is helpful. There is a lot that is that I'm not talking about with space time, specifically, you know, the whole like general theory of relativity or special theory of relativity, there's two different ones. Um, if you're curious about them, we can do some little video overviews on them, or maybe we could even do a little series. So let me know if you have questions about relativity, space time, gravity, that type of stuff, and we can get a learning. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, my dear friends. We will see you next time. Bye.